The biggest thing we talk about at Georgia, and I'm sure everybody does, it's not a secret, I think you can get away with a lot of stuff, but if you have attitude and effort day to day, you're, you're gonna be fine, all right? And uh, we have, we try to gear our program to our best swimmers. You never gear it down, you hopefully, and that brings a few of them coming up. But I will say this, you have to embrace the ones, you don't let them get lost, the ones that are working their tails off all the time. Uh, I can just go back uh, to this year in particular, but embrace the ones that worked the hardest. I had one boy that uh, I sort of acquiesced. He, was, he asked to walk on from uh, Swim Atlanta. One reason I acquiesced, I'm really great friends with his coach, Chris Davis. And uh, so they said he's a 152, 200 butterflyer which does absolutely nothing on the division one level. He went 142. It took, it was a little progression. One year 47, next year 45, and then 44 and 142 plus. Amazing young guy, my size, much more athletic of course. But here's a neat part. He brought a lot of stuff to us. Uh, anyhow, and the part that I loved the best was when he got to Georgia, most of the walk-ons are trying to get lost and not do anything wrong because they're afraid they might leave. And uh, so he walked in the day before and he asked for a meeting. I said, absolutely. So he walks in and uh, he sits down and he goes, I just want to talk to you about my goals. So at the time, he was the slowest kid on the team. So I'm having a goal meeting with the slowest kid on the team. Now, you got to remember, I have men and women, so I got about 60 of those meetings at least. And... Uh, but he wanted to be first. So right then I knew we had a kid. It's, it was that simple. Well, I got, it got even better. He got an NCAA postgrad scholarship. It, it's a long story, but he ended up interviewing for an internship at Barclays up in New York. He became the star child of our business school. And then he beat out, uh, he was one of eight that got the internship. He beat out a few kids from the Ivies for it, which is pretty cool. And and then when he went up to Barclays this summer, he got the highest offer for Barclays next year as a full-time job, more than anybody there from any school. And uh, so all that happened. And then the swimming part changed his life. So kids like that really change your teams too, because to be able to hold him up to everybody, he can do it, you can do it, he can do it, you can do it. Uh, pretty amazing young guy, because he ended up as a star child of our business school. They give about 20 people, you imagine this, this is how things have changed in college, 20 of them are entrusted with $1.8 million that they can invest in any way. This is honest to God money, it's not monopoly money. And those guys made about another three or 400,000 off of it this year. So they have two meetings a year, then he, then he ends up as really the leader of the entire business school, not just, then he had, ended up as a captain also as a walk-on. So I can't tell you how many walk-ons have done this. So anyhow, as I always say, you gear it to your best kids, but embrace the ones that work the hardest. Because I honestly feel some of our championships, when I look back, we, were, we won when we had Schmitty, we won. We had Romano, we won. Uh, we had Christy Kowal, Courtney Shealy, Mary DeSenza, Carolyn Joyce, we won. But it was the last eight kids that went that really changed it. Because what they did, I sort of expected to get done. So, uh, but the ones that are on the bottom line uh, really changed our team. Steve, uh, 